Welcome to the Tech Story Podcast, where storytellers kibitz about technology that makes us go, hmm, what's that about? Now introducing your host, Doug Thompson. In this episode of the Tech Story Podcast, I interview Jeff Young, the LinkedIn guru. We talk about things like how he became the guru, his mother's suggestion that he joined the club of knowing how things work, the fur model, 56K modems, and most importantly, being confused with a guitarist from a metal band. So hi, everybody. Thanks uh, for joining us on the Tech Story Podcast. I have got the LinkedIn guru with me today, Mr. Jeff Young. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing great. Talking to the the Doug, Tom, the, Doug Thompson. <laughs> I assume that you put the, the the in front of it for the same reason I had to put the in front of the LinkedIn guru, right? Some of us is aspirational one because it takes a lot to live up to that. You know, it's a constant yeah. thing you're doing. The, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 and the second was I didn't want to be a, because <laughs> there's oh, already true. Yeah. And an author and these other, I let those other guys one, be a. One among many. What's your favorite tech story? I asked this of everybody and we sort of talked about it. Well, it was long ago in a galaxy far, far away, but my favorite tech story is use of technology in terms of helping people uh, from an onboarding standpoint. At one point in time, I was actually responsible for all the onboarding that was done for the consulting practice. And we used to have, I'll specifically talk about it from a college entry program standpoint. We used to have kids, Chinese-based consultants coming out of college that we were trying to help you know, get indoctrinated to the firm. Well, we used to have a four-week program, sit-down, butts-in-seats program that they'd go to a hotel and sit there for four weeks and get indoctrinated, right? Well, we took that and kind of, the way my boss put it was blurred the lines between knowing, learning, and doing. And basically, we created technology that was to give them the basics up front through computer-based technology. And by the way, I've been around technology. You know, CBT was actually a three-letter acronym they don't even use anymore, but yeah. I used a lot back then. And we created computer-based technology to get them ready. We then took them through a one week's worth of indoctrination, indoctrination because it was still important for them to get the flavor and the culture of the firm and meet the partners and those kind of things. And then we put in place technology that was after the fact so that they could get the training that they need just in time, much like manufacturing just in time work, right? So, so in essence, we saved the firm millions of dollars and it was uh, something I'm very proud of, but it was a great use of technology because it was technology that blurred all those lines uh, without, without uh, taking away the fact that we wanted to make it meaningful for every one of the human beings that came to our firm as well. Well, and that's a great use. I mean, that's what technology, in my opinion, should be used for. And it should actually, if it, when it works well, it fades into the background. You don't have to think about it. it it's, a, it's a vehicle to get across, you know, a message, uh, learning a new skill, things like that. And you've seen technology, again, the, the, you know, you go, go back as far as the CRT and the green screen days. I'll, I'll oh, say. wait. Oh, even beyond before that, actually. Yeah, I remember back in the day when hard drives got to below a dollar a megabyte, and I was excited. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, yeah. When it when it did come down from at least like a hundred dollars per mega you know, uh, per yeah. megabyte. Yeah, exactly. You've continued to evolve. How'd you get? How'd you get become the LinkedIn guru? That I actually didn't even get involved in LinkedIn very much until I retired. And I retired about the beginning of two thousand eight. I wanted to make sure that I could continue to network with people because that's one of the things that I believe is networking is like air, you need it to survive. And so from that perspective, I wanted to make sure that I wanted to network with people. I wanted to also network with professional people, continue. So I asked my network, what's the best tool for me to do that? You know, now that I'm going to be retired, but kind of, and to some degree, maybe out of the loop. And to a person, they said, well, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is the place you need, you, you need to be. So I've been on LinkedIn since May of 2004, but like everybody else, I built this thing, treated it like a field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. No, never happens, okay? But I, you know, I let it sit there uh, for, for three or so years, and, but then I decided, well, if it's gonna be LinkedIn, I'm gonna have to learn how to do this stuff. So my decision process was such that, well, if I'm gonna learn how to do it, maybe the best way for me to learn how to do it is to start teaching it to other people. So that's exactly what I did. I started teaching it. I started doing two seminars a month and then maybe four seminars a month and then five, six seminars a month. It even got up at one point to like nine seminars a month. Oops, too much. 
yeah, but you know, wait a minute, I'm a retired guy. That feels too much like work. I don't want to do that anymore. But the whole point was I, I learned how to use it by teaching it. The interesting thing is that I had people come back to my, my seminars a lot. I mean, you know, there, there was at least one of my good friends that came back to like six or eight of my seminars. And I'm not quite sure what that means about me or about him. Either he's a slow learner or I'm a rotten teacher. Uh, no, may, maybe neither of those things because LinkedIn yeah, is, is it. Yeah, LinkedIn is one of those things that you need to kind of take in bite-sized chunks. So, so from that perspective, uh, about the end of the sixth seminar, being the friend that he is, he comes up to me afterwards and he, he said, he put, you know, shakes his finger at me and he says, you know what, Jeff, you're a real guru with this. And I went, guru, yeah, I really like the sound of that. So maybe I'll start calling myself the guru. And then I, I took it to the extra level and I said, well, if I'm going to call myself the guru, what does guru really mean? Okay, so I look guru up in the dictionary, and in the dictionary, it says guru equal teacher. And I'm going, cool, that's me. I've been doing that practically my entire life as a project manager and many other things. So boom, that was it. And then from that point forward, then it was a matter of I just start calling myself that because someone else called me that. And like you said earlier as well, you know, you got to live up to this. If you call yourself the LinkedIn guru, you know, if you are the LinkedIn guru, you better have something on the ball here because, because people are going to challenge that occasionally. And I don't blame them. I use that as, as a sort of put a stake in the ground to try to, to try to live up to. That was, you know, but it always makes a good story to tell sort of how you came about the name. And, and I, like, I like the things about stories. So I tell us, when we're talking about technology, apparently you, you take the same approach to learning technology as you did to learning how to be a teacher or learning about these other things. Is you're sort of self-motivated and, and learning is very important to you, I gather, from what goes on. To me, it is life. You know, always be learning is, is one of the things I like to, to think about. When you retired, certainly you could have been doing something comfortable, uh, you know, and less, less what, although... It, to me, this sounds like it is comfortable for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the uh, lifelong learner is is a description that I would like people to use. I'm, I may have it on my my tombstone. I hope I, you know to some degree because because uh, if you're not learning, you're dying. You know, I mean, uh, you know, get uh, well. To paraphrase a a a movie that's a Stephen King movie, uh, you know, get busy learning or get busy dying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, it, it just it just means so much to me and if you do that uh, you know it, I guess you get that you know at, as ingrained in you when you're growing up because my mom always used to tell me you know what I want you to belong to a club and I went club uh, you know hey I'm, I'm a kid what do what, what I want to work a club right and she says no 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 this is a free club you can become a member of it I want you to belong to the club of people who know how things work and that will serve you for the rest of your life. And she was absolutely right. You know, learning about how things work makes me a whole lot better at it. And then makes me able to do what I wanted to do as a teacher, which is help other people understand it, help people use it effectively. What are some of the tools that you, that you so outside of technology, we'll get to that in just a minute. So say I'm your friend, it's been a nine, <laughs> it's been a nine yeah. workshop. What do you use to sort of get through to the people that, that aren't quite getting it on the first take or the first approach you take? Well, there's a model that I learned that is way, way back in those same Ernst & Young days, and it's called the FIR model, FIR model, okay? Uh, the approach to anything and getting someone to learn something and be able to use it effectively goes with from F to I to R, okay? So F means foundation. Give them some sort of foundation. Why would you want to do this in the first place? Why is it good for you in the first place, right? And then once you give, and that foundation is also a little bit of knowledge. So understanding the concepts and the terms, those kinds of things. Immersion is actually do it. Get your hands dirty. Get out there and bang on it. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, 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 okay? So, so that, that's what you got to do, especially with a tool like LinkedIn, okay? And then from the next, next perspective, then it's reinforcement. So that's bringing back around some of the things that, oh yeah, do you see how that worked? Well, then it'll work the same over here as well. And that reinforcement piece then keeps some, keeps some learning, keeps some utilizing it in a not new fashion necessarily, but a more effective fashion constantly and continually. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. Somewhat like when you're designing a good presentation, you're going to tell them what you're going to tell them. You that's tell them exactly right. and then you 
re explain what you've been told. Yeah, <laughs> you tell them what you told them, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Tell them what you what you told them, and and that's one of the things that I learned early. And how do you pull in pull the right technology into this? Because I I see some people, and you know, working for Microsoft, I see PowerPoint abused. And I have to apologize to people for allowing you to put 8,000 words on a slide or <laughs> just, or 85 yeah. animations just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah. How do you choose the right technology to amplify your message? Yeah, I, I think so. I, um, let's just say that right now I'm doing it all online. Okay, so a lot of the technology is what we're using right now, Zoom. Uh, because if you're going to do virtual, you, you've got to do, you know, it's the only game. In, well, it's not the only game in town. Obviously, there's Microsoft Teams and all kinds of other good stuff. But but uh, that seems to be the preferred, easy and somewhat free way that uh, some people want to use it. So I'm using that technology. But BC, okay, before Corona, okay, uh, yeah, not quite that far back, but BC anyway. Uh, computers, I, I go yeah, back to <laughs> yeah. My my technology was butts in seats and a computer and a projector, and, and and I think that has always been for me the most effective way. Because as a teacher, it's better for me to be able to illustrate stuff real time. And, and so, you know, no offense to Microsoft. I love Microsoft. I've been using Microsoft products all my life, okay, you know, ever since they were invented. But I don't like death by PowerPoint. You know, it, it, again, it's kind of what you referred to before. So I, don't, I use very, very few, if any, PowerPoint slides in any of my butts and seats presentations. And so I'm actually up there showing you, go here, click this, point at that, drag it over here, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, so that people can see it and immediately. And what I also try to do as well is in that same technology, first of all, show them stuff they didn't know existed. One of the best things that I could ever get as far as a comment is concerned in one of my seminars is, oh, I didn't know it could do that, okay? I love hearing that kind of thing. And so from that perspective, I also try to then show them what the reinforcement piece of that is as well. See, I have done this and that has resulted in this. So, you know, sometimes it gets a little bit about numbers, but you know, if you post something out there, then you want to share, well, that post seemed to work because it got this number of views and this number of reactions and this number of comments, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and so, you know, it's just the proof in the pudding, if you will. So for me, real time is, almost always going to be from now on, even in the virtual mode, going to be the, the piece of technology that I will use because it shows them how to actually use the tool by using the tool. Makes sense. Has this actually made it a little simpler for you to do since you're online and you're doing it anyways than, than having to do that in the projector? Absolutely. Another piece of technology that you might want to, to do to, to use uh, and some of my good good friends who are LinkedIn trainers have done so is write a book, okay? And people ask me why I've, writ I've never written a book. And I'm going, well, because it's LinkedIn. You know, if I wrote a book and then published the book, it would be obsolete two weeks later anyway, because my stuff is how to, and they keep changing how to. So, so from that perspective, it makes it easier for me because I can roll with the punches. I don't have to go back and change 14 PowerPoint slides because they change one, one interface. No, thank you. I, it, it does. You're absolutely right. It makes it a whole lot easier for me. Yeah, there, there was a time back before software as a service where we had these iterative updates that come out quarterly or monthly or, or what have you, where you would be on a cycle for three years. And you're, that was easier, but it wasn't necessarily the best experience for the end user because you had to wait three years to fix a problem. You know, I, I was around when Windows XP launched and you know, then it was a service pack and blah, blah, blah. I mean, and, yeah. but now where it's, it's as a service that you can actually bring new features earlier and it's based on customer feedback. I think that's a better model, but it does make training as a moving target because what you're talking about today could be, you know, could be changed tomorrow and likely will be changed it tomorrow. Probably will be. Yeah, exactly. Probably will be, but, but and, that's and, okay. You know, JIT, like we were talking about from a manufacturing standpoint, means the same thing to training. It should be just in time. Yeah, make it something that's applicable. Because actually, when they leave, even if you're doing just in time, by they go launch something. Oh, it's moved. Every time I open Teams, where'd they move my button to? Because now I mean, we're we're moving things around based on feedback. It it gets to be a journey sometimes, and and I actually like those. I when when I get up and do a presentation or or talk to somebody, and you come upon 
either a question you've never had before that makes you sort of think, or you, hey, can you do this and something's moved? It creates some interesting journeys. One, it gets me a little bit out of my comfort zone where I have to think back on my feet, but it's also, you're sort of learning together. Have you, have you experienced things like that? That's exactly right. I, I think that's a really good point because um, it, as a teacher, you, you, you need to train yourself to roll with those punches uh, because of the fact that you may go look for something and it moved. You may, and, and one of the other, you know, it, that real time, I still believe is really the best way, but it also brings with it its own unique set of challenges because, because of the fact that there are 675 million of our closest friends out here on LinkedIn and Microsoft can't roll everything out within an hour, okay, to all 675 million of those people. I well, you recognize that. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I hate to have that kind of a job, to tell you the truth, you know, nowadays. Uh, but the, the versioning, the version control is obviously something that's a huge uh, aspect of, of rolling out any software nowadays. Always used to be even more so now. But my point being is that the challenge that comes with it is I, as a teacher, I might put something up on the screen and somebody might go home, look it up, and they, and they don't see exactly the same thing at all. Mm -hmm. okay? So I'm constantly having to say that what you see is what I got, not necessarily what you get okay, when you actually go through this process. But if it has rolled out to me, it probably will roll out to you eventually. So it'll be there sooner or later. You teach it, and, and I, I, I like to think that when, as I go explore and go through this and then we'll find something, I try to explain my thought process behind the, the sort of searching for where this went because of, inevitably they're going to face the same thing. Well, you know, from, from a technology standpoint, one of the things that I learned in debugging or, or going through the process of, of figuring out what went wrong is that there is a standard operating procedure that goes through that you go through each and every single time. So it's answer this question, so eliminate this, and then go on to the next thing, you know, et cetera. And so, so I, and honestly, this is an old tech support joke, but the, but the fact of it is, did you turn it off and turn it back on again? Is it on, okay? Is the first of those questions all the way up to the point where, oh, if it moved over here, maybe it's in this pull down instead of that pull down, okay? You know, from that perspective, uh, you, you've got to roll with those kind of punches, and and and, and honestly, I I love the, I love the, the the tech jokes that are like that because I've experienced it, you know I've been there and I know how funny it can be, and, you know, in in quotes funny. <laughs> there, was, there was a there was a I think it was a far side actually that oh. back in the day you see two guys in a cube and this one guy sort of leaning back with his hand over the microphone says I, I think I'm finally getting through to him I hear the shrink wrap coming off the manual. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we we've all been on that that journey. What? Uh, tell me about a time when something just you know, like totally broke. And I'll, I'll I'll share first because I don't like to put you on the spot. But I was doing a presentation in front of we have a we had a retirement community close to where I live, and they had like a thousand members. I mean, they were all retired, but they were very interested in, in technology and computers. And I would come up and I'd give a talk on it, and I was using a new product that we had called Sway, which is, it's all internet based, right? So you have to have a connection. There's no, there's no hard copy at that point in time. So I'm going up and I've got like 15, I don't use a lot. They're usually like pictures that I use to sort of frame and do a pivot on a talk that I have. But I was, I was pulling that up and I got about two tiles into that and they forgot to tell me that they were gonna be working on the internet service that day. Uh oh. And so I'm totally like, okay, well, so I, you know, I shut the projector off. I, you know, I could do shadow puppets, which I'm horrible at. <laughs> yeah. But we had a discussion because I knew back in my mind what I wanted to talk about. And we, and we took some of these interesting, and they said, you know, that was the best presentation, you know, because they'd seen me do it a few times, but what we've ever had here. It, it, was, it, was, it was that personal experience. I was up there. I wasn't talking to Adam. We were talking through him, and I was, you know, we were telling jokes. So do you have, did you, certainly in your career, is if, do, if you're doing nine a month, you've had something like that happen. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, there, there was, uh, it, it happens all the time, even on a Zoom session that was a week or so ago, I'm doing a Zoom session for a nonprofit. And the guy who is the host of the Zoom session, his Wi-Fi goes belly up. Okay. Oh. Now I'm still on. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going, Ken, 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 you still there, Ken? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, unfortunately, all that did was 
well, I, fortunately, from the standpoint of the, of the tool standpoint, he died, but nobody else did. Everybody else is still here. So yeah, again, yeah. it's roll with the punches. I'm going, well, Ken will be back. Okay, you know, st please stand by, you know, do technical difficulties, that kind of thing. <laughs> now, he never did get back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was 10 minutes more. I finished up the presentation. You know, it was all done. So, yeah. you know, it, it's cool. Now, the good news about when, I, when I'm doing this and you're the set up of the Zoom session, usually that means your technology is the, is the piece that I'm relying on, right? Mm -hmm. So that takes kind of the onus off me a little bit, makes it a little bit easier for me. The other day I did something, and I'm, I'm going to give her a shout out now. I hope this is okay. But, but there's a lady by the name of Brenda Miller who does a lot of LinkedIn Lives. And I love Brenda, and she's fantastic. I've done like three different LinkedIn Lives with her. But the other day, it took us three tries to get LinkedIn Live to start correctly. And finally, third time's a charm, we actually got it to work. So we did like seven minutes, five minutes, and then half an hour, 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the third time was a charm. It took three times to get it to actually work for us to actually be able to get the live session up and running and rolling. And that's just because, hey, life is a server farm, folks, you know, and if there's a server out there that goes belly up, you might actually have to wait for a little while before you get started. Yeah, that's, I've been in tech my, pretty much my whole life. I mean, I started working on copiers and those things would, would break, but, um, you know, it, it's, things happen, things break. And if you let it bother you, even if you're in charge, if, if you let it totally derail you and you become that outage, rather than maintaining, okay, well, you always plan for a contingency. I used to mentor team and training athletes. I don't know if you've ever, it's leukemia, lymphoma and leukemia society. They raise money, but you also get people to, over a six month program, you learn to do a triathlon or something like that. And, and I was a mentor for that program. And I would always tell my mentees on race day, because I've, I've got some triathlon, I've got, I did a couple Ironman. And I said, look on race day, plan for at least one thing to go wrong. You know, and if it doesn't, that's a bonus day. You know, you, that's a rare, enjoy that. But if, but if it does, then you don't freak out. You don't just like, you know, throw a tantrum and you, okay. It's so one thing you work through the problem. So I, I think giving permission, you know, people to expect that, hey, something may go wrong and I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll be ready for it. I'm not going to let it totally, you know, break, break, break me down. Yeah. I mean, it's not as much of a problem as it used to be. Because technology is actually a, quite a bit more reliable and a lot better than it ever used to be. So, so I don't have to plan as much as I used to before. But, you know, I, because I very rarely now, I might have something that is usually, I've usually got a one-page handout that I've mm -hmm. almost always got with me as well. Now, I can't do that virtually as, as much, right? But if I've got a one-page handout, if everything goes to in a handbasket, okay, then I'm still okay because I've still got that one page handout that they can look at, I can talk to, and we can and we can have a conversation about. So yeah, worst case scenario, we still have analog. <laughs> uh, oof. Analog? Oh my goodness. Are we talking about listening to the modem mating call here? No, 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 no. I don't think yet. Yeah. Talk about paper and pen. <laughs> oh, that analog. Okay, got it. Yeah. That, you know, we're not talking about that, the uh, war games with the modem and, and, and oh yeah, the whopper. Yeah. Uh, well, I do remember that one. I got 56K and I said, ooh, I'm, I'm killing it now. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. Am I quick now, BB? What is, uh, what do you see sort of the, the future? I mean, going back, because you did a lot of in person before. You had the butts and seats. Now you got the virtual butts and the virtual seats. <laughs> As we come out of this, um, everybody has to work from home. And this is a little, asking you to be a philosopher a little bit. Where do they go? Where, what's, what become, I hate the term new normal, but what becomes normal? Yeah. No, you're right. I'm, I'm not really fond of that new normal term, but because there's, it's, there's always a new normal, right? Yeah. There's, it's always changing. I don't know that this is philosophical, just I guess in my humble opinion. I think honestly that it's going to move us a little bit more toward the virtual than we've ever been before. So I think there's going to be a lot more people working from home. I think there's going to be a lot more virtual sessions. I think there's going to be a lot more virtual training, you know, those kinds of things. But from my also personal perspective, I hope I can get back to the, the actual in front of a crowd and actually be there because it is so much better for both of us, the, the learner and the, the teacher, because I get to hear, I get to see, you know, I can see that glazed look at the deer in the headlights look. I mean, I can't see that through Zoom. It's just not there. 
know, so I, I'm, I got a feeling that we're gonna, we've moved off the dime and we're gonna get, you know, there and stay there for the most part. But I really am looking forward to going back to when I can actually get in front of a crowd. And that's probably just because I'm a frustrated stand-up comedian anyway. But, but, uh, but you know, I, I love being in front of a crowd because I can actually interact with them. Yeah, you can't, you can't replicate that energy transfer that you get from a crowd. That's exactly um, you know, video's nice, but there's, there's still a, there's a, 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 a screen that prevents that true energy transfer from, from coming back. Because I can't listen, look at comments and, and type. You know, you can't do these things, which are limiting but vi videos better you at least get to see some faint but although now you're or if you're on stage you've got the entire you got props you've got your entire body you got the things to work with well now you're in this frame exactly uh, maybe yeah. from your shoulders up that you've got to work with and i'm talking to somebody later today sort of you know how does she go from an in-person presentation things and all that to to virtual and it's a lot of it okay well we got to kill some of these slides you know get rid of that and you know, do you have props? Do you can you use a whiteboard? Can you do some other things that that uh, are are definitely skills if you're going to do virtual? And I'm like you, I think it's going to be we we've broken that firewall of we've always done it this way. Yeah, we pushed yeah. we pushed past that, which frankly we needed to do for a while in a lot of different things. True, but I and I think the ones that are in person then get to be a little bit higher value. You know, I believe, and then we'll have a lot more virtual ones. And so I don't, I don't think. I don't think that'll ever change. I mean, you know, again, I've, I've been around since dirt was invented. So, you know, way back in the day that the, the piece of software that actually came with back in my Ernst and Young days, the piece of software that came with the operating system, the Microsoft operating system was something called net meeting. You ever mm -hmm. you remember that one? Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm sure it's long gone. Okay. I mean, you know, some of, some of it may have actually ended up inside of, of Microsoft teams, but, but the, the, the concept hasn't changed. If you're going to create something that is meaningful and useful in that mode, then you need to put in and build in and uh, create a curriculum, if you will, or, or, the, or the class that maximizes what you're doing, where you're doing it. Because for example, when we were, it would be nothing in the old Ernst and Young days for us to be on Microsoft Net, Net Meeting and actually have a thousand people watching the presentation, okay? That, that the technology existed way back there, and that's that we're talking probably that's the mid 90s now. Okay, now from that perspective, though, we also knew that since it's all remote, we're going to have to build in something that keeps them on their toes as opposed to doing their email, which is what people would do anyway. You know, exactly, you know, so every once in a while, we're going to put in a little quiz, or we're going to put in a poll, or we're going to say, you know, come back to us and you know. Pound on your keyboard for a second and listen to what we got to say, and then you keep them for a little bit longer, right? So as long as you keep those kind of things up and you d design it correctly, it can be effective that way as well. I've just yeah. never found anything that is as effective as being actually in front of those folks. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you with that. So I, 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 this, this is probably a worthless question because I think your name says it all. Where do people find you? <laughs> oh, yeah. I think you might be able to find me on LinkedIn. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Secondly, if you really, really want a bunch of my stuff, the easiest place to do is go out to the world search engine, Google or any other search engine, and type in hashtag the LinkedIn guru, all one word, and man, you're gonna find you're gonna find tons of my stuff. Uh, you know, it, it's amazing to me. I, I actually illustrate this uh, occasionally in my in my classes. I talk about the fact that I've got a name like Jeff Young. Mm -hmm. You know pretty common name. There are like six Jeff Youngs in the Columbus, Ohio phone book alone. Okay. And, 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 you know, and if you actually went out to Google and searched for Jeff Young, the guy you get is the former guitar player for Megadeth. Have a great day, Jeff. You too. I very much appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. I love what you do, uh, Doug, because, because uh, I know what it takes to actually do a podcast and be a part of this process. And this is just another technology challenge. One that I probably will never get into. I'll, I'll stick with LinkedIn. LinkedIn. You can have the podcast stuff. That's Namaste. well, the way I can talk and I like to talk. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I talk with great people like you. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tech Story Podcast. And it would really be helpful if you'd go out to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast and rate it. You know, give it a five star because it helps other people find the podcast. It really raises the visibility. It would mean the world to me if you would do that.